Hi, this is Charlie Matatuyela with Blue Bear Flutes and BlueBearFlutes.com, our website where we sell Native American flutes. You might want to look there before saying, do you guys sell these flutes? Uh, and also our Instagram is Blue Bear Flutes as well. Of course, likewise, you'll find us on Twitter once in a while, on Facebook sometimes, and on TikTok recently. So you can see that there as well. Uh, but uh, here on YouTube, we try to post videos about making and playing Native American flutes as often as we can. When we're not making flute videos, we're usually making flutes, and that's most of the time. So uh, today's video is a very simple video. It's one I've done before, but not with this particular setup. And it's something that I wanted to share not only for this particular setup, but in general for the sake of... Um, anybody wanting to mic their Native American flute, that is, boost the sound of it, make it echo, or do anything of the sort. So here I have Blue Bear Flute's new Native American flute amplifier. It's got our little logos and insignias everywhere. It was actually designed for our business so that you can play Native American flutes with it. The little instruction booklet right here that comes with it is also in PDF format on my website. If you don't, maybe... No uh, leando en inglés o sagen sie nicht in English. You can still read it in some other language by transferring it over. So that's an option for you. Or, like I say, uh, you can uh, go there in case you lose yours, which is more than likely the case because it seems like a lot of people speak English these days. Um, so what we're going to be talking about here is connecting a microphone to your flute, specifically your Native American flute, um, do my little air quotes for a reason. If you're not sure why I do those, go back and check some of my other videos. But <laughs> we'll get into that. Um, but uh, we're going to be placing the microphone in a couple of different locations on the flute to find which one would sound best, and I'll tell you what and why. And we'll also be going over uh, the echo that this particular amplifier puts out, uh, and maybe your other amplifiers. We'll talk briefly about that. And also how to connect it to a drone, because a lot of people say, how do I connect this to a drone flute? So to start with, oh, and then most importantly, troubleshooting for customers who decide to push this button right here for some reason on this wireless microphone or something similar, uh, it will actually disconnect your microphone from the amplifier. And a lot of people just have a difficulty, and I don't mean to call anybody out, but just really have a difficulty reading the instructions on how to, how to connect it back up together, which is what I'm going to do. So first... A lot of us over the years have mic'd our flute up here, which is a good place to do it, especially if you have a microphone that doesn't have a lot of pickup. If it isn't capable of picking up sound very well, or if it's a very quiet microphone or just a really low-end model, I would recommend putting it up here. Uh, the reason for that is this is the loudest part of a Native American flute. I realize this is a walking stick flute. Uh, but, you know, if you thought about it this way, you could cut the flute off right here and cut it off down here and it's no longer a walking stick flute, it's just a flute. So if you mic it right here uh, with this amplifier, which has a very high power microphone and a very high powered amplification system, it'll actually cause some overtones. And that's something that even when you're recording or whatever, you have to learn to avoid. The way in the studio to avoid these overtones is by stepping back from the mic. And because this microphone has noise canceling, if you're in a quiet room and you did that, it'd be okay. But if you're outside playing to an audience and you put the microphone six feet away from your flute, you're only going to hear really nothing. You won't hear anything coming out of the, the amp because it's uh, got noise canceling capabilities. So what I recommend doing is just turning this little microphone around and pushing it down to where the sound of the bottom of the flute is, which on this one has actually a hole drilled there for this sound escape, whereas other flutes may have like a bottom of the flute. This one's bottom of the flute is actually solid down here. So the air and sound escapes out of this hole. And from here, let's see, we can mic it like that. And because it is the full sound coming out of the flute down here, but it is not as loud and violent as it is blowing and blasting. You know, a lot of you blowhards out there really just pushing it out as hard as you can. It's not doing that. You'll actually find that the sound quality, especially with a unit that is as sensitive as this one is, um, is just amazing. The tones that you get out of the flute coming out of the bottom of this are much better than they are coming out of the sound hole up there. So, um, 
This is what we call like a tuning hole or the air escape or the bottom, the distal end of the flute or the bottom of the flute or you can call it 20 different other things. And then this is where the sound actually is created up here at the sound hole or the block or the bird. Uh, some people call it a fickle, which is the bottom of a Norwegian horse's lip. Ein Heston. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if this looks like a Heston but uh, I would say that it looks more like a flute, so you can call it a fiffle if you like. But anyway, um, so when I play especially a very loud flute like this walking stick flute, I mic it down there. I've actually gotten a habit of micing this particular unit because I've used a lower end mic for such a long time up there. I've used it down here for a very, very long time now. I'm very pleased with it. So that aside, the next thing I want to show you is if you have a different type of flute or if you have any other instrument. I mean, we have a lot of people that play the dulcimer that buy our amplifier specifically for that. Now, this drone has a fingering on the back, so we don't want to get too close to that. And if you notice, it's just sliding because the diameter of this isn't exactly the same as that. But I have a big enough piece of Velcro. We can loosen it and tighten it and do whatever we need to with it. And that's all you basically have to do if you're going to connect it to a drone. You can make it go up here if you like, or if you have one of those crazy six hole flutes that you always keep a piece of leather tied over this fingering or you've advanced so that you can not have to keep a leather tied over that fingering, but now you keep it covered up with your finger 99.9% .9 of the time, or you play some weird sounding notes, whichever one you are, you could fit in both categories. Um, if you have that piece of leather there, you can just cover it up like this. Now, mind you, I'm not talking about my six-hole flutes. You don't keep any holes covered all the time because they're made the traditional way where you play all the fingerings, and they're a completely different instrument than these other modern ones that most flute makers make. But if you have that, you can actually put your piece of Velcro over that and mic it in one direction or the other. Um, this is a higher-toned drone, so I'm probably not going to want to mic it up there because I know higher tones are usually louder and... Uh, what I'm going to do is just slap it down here with this flexible head. You can actually put it right there and get it more over the flute side, or you can get it more over both sides. And if you do that, well, let's see what it sounds like. One little trick. If you don't want to alert your, your listeners that Charlie is playing, then you don't have to turn this all the way up when you turn it on. Um, so if you notice, I turned it on. And I just turned it on until it clicked. I'm going to turn it off, and then I'm going to turn it back on and let you hear the intro. It's a YouTube channel intro, which is kind of cool. And... You may hear that I actually have it more over the drone side. I can hear it from here and the mic and the amplifier facing away from me. Now let's see. Yeah, so it's a distinguishable difference between the two. I'm gonna turn the volume down so we don't have any loud noises. And then finally, uh, the last two things I want to go over are specific to this amplifier, and that is the echo. So I'm going to test the echo. I'm going to turn the echo all the way down, turn my volume up a little bit so that you can hear my voice. And there you go, hearing my voice, but there is no echo. As you turn the echo up, you can tell immediately that there is a echo being added to my voice. And that's how you test to see if the echo is working. Now, a lot of people may say there's not enough echo or there's not, you know, I'm sorry, but <laughs> apples and apples, this is like excellent echo from this amplifier. If you have a different unit and it's not producing enough echo, you may want to consider what you're doing there or find another way to do that. So anyway, uh, now the last thing I wanted to tell you about uh, is the pairing option. A lot of people throw words around that they don't know, like fipple, or like sack, which is a, is a Native American flute maker's community, which I don't belong to any of those uh, officially that I'm aware of. Uh, people may have belonged to me to some of them, but, but Native American flute maker's community use the phrase SAC for uh, slow air chamber, which 
You can call this slow air if you want to, uh, but honestly, if I'm thinking of my fluid dynamics, the only place that the air is fast is right here, and the amount of air chamber here is just as fast traveling as it is traveling down here, but because a lot of this air is going out, less of it is actually traveling down here. So they call that the slow air chamber, um, being technologically minded, uh, because Native Americans were never tech, we could get on a tangent. But anyway, um, I want to, to show you what happens here. This microphone is not Bluetooth. The amplifier is Bluetooth, which means I can connect my, my phone to it and I can play music out of the amplifier. And we'll, of course, have another video about that, although I've got previous ones. But you can connect. And, and of course, the instruction sheets do a really great job. I mean, this, this isn't just something I proofread before it got put out there. I mean, that is the instruction sheet. Um, but uh, this unit has Bluetooth capabilities, but this is not Bluetooth. This is UHF, ultra high frequency, kind of like the big channels on your TV if you twist the knob. Uh, but, uh, and, and to you kids out there, those channels don't exist anymore, but that's what we used to say when we were, when we were young. Um, anyway, the um, microphone is UHF, and because it is UHF, you have to follow the UHF pairing instructions, which are in the amplification booklet here. As a matter of fact, if you see, this is the front of the book. I'm looking at the back of the book. This thing's two-sided, right? So there's a lot of instructions up here, but if you look at the back of it, charging, Bluetooth, uh, and then troubleshooting, pair the UHF manually. The wireless microphone factory settings have been paired successfully. You can use it directly, meaning this thing is ready to go right out of the box. Uh, a lot of people want to overcomplicate things by trying to do stuff they don't need to do or understand, which is common, but this is the most simplest amplifier I've ever had which is the reason I like to recommend it to you. Microphone, if the microphone has no sound or it is disconnected for some reason, which is usually because you push this button and held it down for no good reason, if that happens and there's no sound coming out of it, you need to pair it manually. I'm gonna turn this back up and let's see, there's no sound. Hey, how did that happen? Ooh, I pushed a button. Okay, not calling any of you out. We all have different learning speeds. Some of us learn before things happen, and some of us learn when things happen, and some of us learn years after things happen, if you know what I mean. Uh, so anyway, the trick to getting this thing to repair is to pair, again that is, you have to click the M button here, which is mode. Bluetooth is waiting for a connection. This ain't Bluetooth. Let's see what the next option is. Audio in mode. That's if you want to plug a line right into the side of this. UHF mode. UHF mode. Now, why would I want to watch those TV channels on this amplifier? Anyway, to pair UHF manually, put it in UHF mode, and then hold the mode button down. UHF is waiting for a connection. And then hold this button down. And now we're connected, except for a little bit too loud. But yeah, there you go. Simple, simple thing to do. I would recommend rewinding that and watching again if you have a hard time reading the instructions. But if you follow the instructions exactly, I didn't even turn this off and turn it back on. You don't have to do that. But that's how you pair again. So I'm going to disconnect, holding this button down for no good reason. You see the little light blink there a couple times. Now, turning the volume up on the amplifier, you don't hear anything. I'm going to hit mode. Bluetooth is waiting for a connection. Next. Audio in mode. Next. UHF mode. We're in UHF mode. As per the instructions, hold this button down, the M button. UHF is waiting for a connection. And then we hold, we let go of the M, and then we hold this button down. One, two, three, four, five. And there we go. Very simple to, to reconnect your microphone if you bump that button. I mean, granted, bumping the button's not gonna do it. You actually have to hold it down for five seconds to get this thing to shut off. Um, so that's it, very simple. The best amplification system I have ever owned for the Native American flute, and I have gone through some performance equipment. I love this thing. It is very loud at about 25 watts. It's rechargeable. I haven't charged this thing in about a month and have used it several times since then. 
which is what most people will find. If you use it straight, it's good for probably four to six hours. Anyway, rely on this instruction sheet. It's very easy to use and very easy to understand, and the design is very human. Anyway, I hope you guys have found some video usefulness in my video. And if you have, don't think this is my only video about Native American flutes or amplifiers or making flutes or playing the flute. We actually have a 12-week course on how to play the Native American flute. We have new videos coming all the time on playing and making Native American flutes. And I've been doing this for a while. I mean, for a long time. We have made a lot of flutes. You wouldn't believe me if I told you how many flutes my wife and myself have made. And she's, in the last couple of years, has made the most of them. She's making a lot of flutes these days. Anyway, I hope you have found some usefulness in this. Please check out our other videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe, as all YouTubers beg you to do if you feel necessary. If you don't, see you later. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Y'all have a good time flute playing and flute making. Charlie Matutuyala signing out for now. Don't forget to visit our website, bluebearflutes.com. Once again, that's bluebearflutes.com, bluebearflutes.com.